I know, this isn't the most pleasant way of spending your time, but it turns out afterwards as a real time saver. This is the same like for example a professional kitchen of a restaurant. They don't just start cutting the veggies, cooking the soup from the very beginning or putting the chicken into the oven for the first time when the guest already has ordered. It would take hours until the person could start to eat. They are prepared. So why should you? The more you have prepared in advance, the faster you can use it when it comes to the creative process. And to be honest, I think we all have spent enough time with absolute meaningless things when we were not in the mood to be creative. Imagine you would have spent some parts of this time in preparing stuff, or for those who just start producing, take some of this time to do yourself a favor. Apart from cutting samples to the right lengths, or cut out silence, sorting out samples you wouldn't have used anyway, and organizing samples in a way that you always know where to look for. For time stretching, open the sample in Edison. Right click the name field and enter the correct tempo. Enable the tempo sync button and save the file. From now on, this file will always preview in the browser matching your project tempo. And when dragging it into your project, it will always be time stretched to fit. If it's about your own samples, which you perhaps want to consolidate or render, just enable Save Tempo Information in the Render dialog. Under Tempo Syncing, I understand material which must be synced to tempo but may not be stretched. So, slicing. Open your sample in a new instance of SliceX. Control first if SliceX has recognized the correct tempo and play back the loop at a quite low tempo. This shows you all the clicks and pops which happen because of unprecise slice markers. Make sure that Snap to Grid is turned off and put the slice markers to the right position. Sometimes it makes sense to turn slice markers into real regions to be able to adjust the end point of a slice without changing the start point of the next one. Often it makes sense to execute the action de click out all regions. This applies a tiny fade out at the end of a region to prevent clicks. If you are happy with the result, save the file. All the slice markers will be from now on be present in the sample the way you set them and will be always be used by FL Studio. No matter if it's about the slice map or slice stretch modes in the sampler or audio clip, 
or if you open the sample in Fruity Slicer or SliceX. You will never be forced again having to do this work ever again. For pitch shifting means all tonal samples. You just want to play like an instrument in the sampler. You can ignore all samples in the key of C. That's right. All samples recorded in the key of C will automatically be set to the correct root key in FL Studio, so you can happily ignore them. For all others though, you open the sample in Edison and go into the properties window like we did for the time stretch preparation. But instead of setting a tempo, we set the actual middle key. This determines the root key for FL Studio samplers. Save the file and we are ready. From now on, if you drag the sample into Direct Wave or the sampler channel, the root key of this sample is automatically set to the correct pitch and you can immediately begin to play. A little hint for using multi samples and preparing them for Direct Wave you can as well define lowest and highest notes. With a little trick, Direct Wave now limits the sample to the defined key zone. All this preparation can of course be done the other way around. Let's say you have for example some drum samples which get auto-stretched even if you don't want that, sometimes to complete silly values. This can happen if the sample creator stupidly added tempo information or you have accidentally rendered the file with the bespoke function save tempo information in the render dialog enabled. To get rid of this tempo information doesn't work as simple as you would expect if you try to delete it. It needs a little trick. Just enter zero in the tempo field and accept. After getting rid of the tempo information, just overwrite the existing file. By the way, if you try to overwrite a file with Edison or SliceX, make sure that you deselect the file in the browser. Otherwise, you'll get an error message. And don't be afraid. This is all non-destructive means it doesn't affect the sound of your samples in any way if you load them in a different door or instrument which doesn't support this information. If this information isn't supported, it simply gets ignored but still loads fine and plays fine. With all the preparation, it can of course happen that you have just downloaded a sample from Splice or other sources which doesn't have the tempo information yet included. So how to tell the sampler or audio clip at which tempo the sample was recorded at? There are two ways. First, to tell the generator the length of the sample in beats or bars, if you know it. This can be done in two different ways by using the right-click menu of the time knob and choosing one of the options or second, by using the stretch mode of the playlist and stretch the sample to a length where it sounds right. Please note that this works only with samples which do not have any tail but are cut to loop perfectly. Second, perhaps the most safe method, tell the generator the original tempo. Again right click the time knob, but this time choose auto detect. In the upcoming window, choose type in BPM, enter the value and confirm. You can let the generator make a good guess too if you don't know it the exact tempo. Please experiment a bit with the other functions. By the way, here's an option too if your sample was at a different length than the available options I showed before. You can use type in beats to enter a numerical the correct number. This right click menu respectively the time knob itself is as well the way to go if you want to disable time stretch for the sample. Either choose in the right click menu none or pull the knob completely down. Especially when pitching vocal samples it can sometimes be helpful to adjust the formants of the voice to get a better or desired result. The time stretch modes in the generators do not have any control over formants, neither has new tone. 
but they are still an option left. Open the sample in Edison All there is, is you and, me. and click on the little clock icon to enter the time stretch dialog. I find the time stretch a bit cumbersome in here, but for pitch shifting and form and control the dialog is perfect. All Adjust the course and fine and pitch me. to your liking and experiment with these modes and the form and multiplier, which sound you like the best. All there is is you and me. All there is is you and me. Thank you for watching.